In this video, we're going to look at a second, we're going to take a second look at a, at a problem pr proposed by Catherine Kosak. Uh, Jonathan has uh, collected some data about some favorite colors from his friends, and we want to build a, a frequency table for that data. This is a small data set, so we could build that frequency table by hand quite easily. We just need to count up how many reds there are, how many oranges there are, how many yellows there are, and so on, and summarize that in a table. But what I'd like you to do is imagine that this data set is much larger. Then we'd, it wouldn't be long before we'd really want to use a computer to help us uh, do that task. We're going to look at three ways of handling a frequency table for uh, qualitative or, or categorical data. One will actually build a character vector, a character for each one of the co uh, colors in the items. Uh, second, we'll build some objects uh, from which we'll build a character vector. And then finally, we'll look at uh, a factor vector. So we want to take this data, and for each one of these colors, we want to build a character. Now, notice that we need to put each of these in parentheses, or else when R looks at it, it's going to think that it's an object and try and see what's stored there. But rather, we want to have them characters, so they need to all be in parentheses. That could be done by copying the original data, because we've got a digital uh, form of the data here, pasting it into an editor and using a search and replace to help put all the parentheses in and so on. But that takes a little bit of time. That's the effort. That there's always a challenge when you're working with data. Data scientists find that munging the data or wrangling the data so that it's in the form that the computer can handle it well takes a, a good percentage of their, of their effort. Once we have the character vector, we can then use the table function to work on that character vector and just ask the computer to count up how many, how many of each color there are. Now notice that by default, table puts the characters in, in uh, ascending order, in, in this case, in alphabetical order. So it, but that might not be how we want it. We'd like to have this other category to be at the end and would like to match the same uh, order of listing that uh, Kosak did in, in her video. When looking at a table in R, we can, can append square brackets on the end and ask it to show us particular columns. So if we put square brackets and put a little vector here, can use the concatenate function to build the order of the vector of the columns that we want, then we can say, well, I want to look at column six first, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's red. And then we want to look at, uh, at uh, column three, which is one, two, three, orange, and then yellow, and uh, so on. So this is the list of the columns in the order that we want to see them. And so there's one, two, three, four, the fourth column we want to have listed last. And so there now you see them ordered uh, in the way that we want them to be. A, a, a nice tool. Advantages of this method, each one of the categories uh, are, are identified as a character object. And uh, the, the disadvantage is that it takes us a while to do that editing. So here's a second strategy. Let's build an object for each one of these categories. So now this object red contains a character that is the, that is, that's red. So now that we have each one of these objects defined, we could just copy the digital information, paste it into our script here uh, to, to concatenate that, that into a vector, uh, which will be a, an object-oriented vector. I'm just using these dots, dot zero, to kind of keep track of the different uh, objects that I'm making. So, so there we've got that data. We can easily use the, uh, the table function to produce our table again. And, and of course, we want to order the 
columns in the way that we want them to be. So the advantage here is that we had to do this little bit of construction, first of all, to get the objects made. Then it was easy for us to copy the digital information and put it in here. The final strategy that we'd like to discuss here is using what's called a factor vector. It's not unusual for for data, categorical data, to be coded with a number. For example, you might use one for a response of yes and zero for a response of no. In, in our case, we might uh, have one represent red and two, three, four, five, six, seven to represent uh, the other colors respectively. Um, one reason for, for using this code for categorical variables is sometimes it's just easier to type that information in and to, to manage it electronically. But then we'd like to have that data be able, to, would like to be able to read that data in a, in a more human form. So we're going to use something called a, a factor a variable or a factor vector. In our problem, the, uh, the data could have been coded this way. So I've got a red. Remember that five was uh, a blue or something. <laughs> so so if, go back and compare. You'll notice that, that these numbers correspond to each of the colors in the order uh, that they were listed in the original problem. So now once that's done, once the, the data is in this numerical coded form, then we could do a table of that, but now notice that the headings on the, co uh, the, on the table say that one, we've got three ones, we've got one, two, we've got four threes and uh, six fours and so on. But it's a little hard for us to read because we've got to go back and check, well, what does this code mean? What is seven? Well, seven was other, one was red and so on. So what can be done then, what R can, can handle very well, is to build a factor out of this. So we're going to take this, this numerically coded data and turn it into a factor with the labels that ones are going to be red, twos are going to be orange, threes are going to be yellow, uh, four, five, six, and seven, uh, so on. Okay. Now once that's done, then we can look at the table of that factor variable and it looks now at these these names these factor names instead of the the numbers and produces the result so when when you find data where the data is coded very likely you'll want to use this factor function to convert that data that data vector in that numerical vector into a uh, factor vector so that uh, you can handle that categorical uh, data in that way. Okay, all of this is summarized in a handout. You might want to grab that and either relook at the video or read the handout for, for more details. Okay, see you in class.